tonight we discuss the issue of digitization and its impact to viewers. We are joined by Mr. Gelfand Kalsio, the chairman of the ZBC Board Committee on Digitization and Technology. Mr. Kalsio has been involved in the development of digital migration plans for South Africa public broadcaster SABC. Welcome to News Hour, Mr. Kalsio. Thank you. Good evening to the viewers. Now, the International Telecommunication Union set the 17th of June 2015 as the deadline for the whole world to switch to digital broadcasting. What is digitization? Digitization is the process of taking our analog systems uh, from analog to digital. The process entails moving from tape-based systems to server-based systems. It's an entire process that entails uh, you know, changing our workflows as well as the equipment and a whole host of other you know, pieces and components that make up analog systems that have to be taken out of the system in order to create a digital signal. Why do we need to meet this deadline? The deadline is important because it's an ITU deadline. International Telecommunications Union is the international policy maker. In other words, they made a decision that every country, including Zimbabwe, has to have moved from analog systems to digital systems by that date. So if you do not comply as a country, you stand a chance of uh, uh, getting your signal being interfered by different other uh, would-be users in the same spectrum in which you are operating. For instance, if you are broadcasting a signal in the open air, there are various other you know, uh, sig signal interference that would be caused by the lack of non-migration, so therefore everyone is required and compelled to move from VHF to UHF from a broadcast perspective. Now, what benefits does digitization bring to the viewer at home? The benefits are huge. There are a multitude of benefits. The first one I can think of right now that comes to mind is that there is an instant quality change. You will see good quality on TV. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is that you, you will be able as a viewer, as a consumer at home, to make a choice. You know, you watch TV, you know, you're not stuck on the particular times you are watching news hour, it starts at eight, you would probably want to record it. Chances are you are able to do that with digital TV. So you are able to also play number of, uh, you know, languages. Like for instance, Shona and Debele, you will have different channels, variety of channels. So a whole host of advantages where the user, the consumer is the biggest beneficiary in this uh, digital migration. Let's come to the cost of this whole process. What is pro the projected cost and who's expected to fund the project? The costs of digital migration are huge. For any country, it's no child's play. You are really looking at uh, quite a large amount of money in terms of investment recapitalization. Typically, you are to, to, for our first phase for the ZBC, if I were to just give you an example of the first phase, what it entails, you're going to be changing your cameras, you're going to be changing your FCC, the final control centers, you're going to change, you're going to introduce tape libraries, you're going to digitize your content. There's a whole range and to do all of the above and changing these systems require significant amount of money in the first phase of around 60 million US dollars. And where do you expect ZBC to get that? Oh, well, this, uh, the, 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 the government has to fund it. In any country, the, the, the digitization of the national public broadcaster is the responsibility of the government of the day. And in this case, we expect our government to be funding digital migration. Now, what impact does digitization, um, apart from picture quality, for the viewer have? Uh, as I said earlier on, there's a whole range of benefits in terms of impact. From a quality point of view, that's one. But uh, also, you know, a variety of channels. For instance, the ZBC has got only one channel at the moment, ZBC, and also maybe channel two, which is limited to, a, you know, two provinces. But with the digitization, you'll have a multitude of channels. You'll have a channel dedicated to only news, for instance, and another channel dedicated for sports and another channel for documentaries, movies, kids' programs, so the variety. So this uh, environment where we migrate from analog to digital brings a whole host of advantages. The consumer just wants to be in that space. Now, in view of the current signal distribution challenges, what role will ZBC play to ensure signal is distributed countrywide? The distribution of the signal is the primary responsibility of transmedia. 
which is, uh, you know, mandated by the government to transmit the signal of any broadcaster in the country. So with digitization, what will happen is that we will be able, there will be mechanisms with the digital signal to be able to monitor more effectively because the system which is digital is, is, is effective and efficient. It gives you reports. You are able to tell which transmitter is down. That information is instantly relayed to the ZBC without, you know, the consumer having to phone you, you will know that uh, listeners in this region are not receiving us and you, you, you sort of preempt the problems and take preemptive steps to correct what is wrong. So those are, you know, in, in a nutshell, we will be able to monitor more effectively Transmedia as a company in terms of our service level agreements, what we expect of it as a distributor of our signal, and all of those will be possible in a digital world. So gone will be those days where quality, squeaky sound on TV, scrappy sound and all of that will disappear with digital migration. Now, this digital migration program, how does it help the country as a whole? The country as a whole will benefit in, the, in that uh, once you see, we operate on a frequency called VHF, very high frequency spectrum, which is, and you know, spectrum is, is, is scarce. It's managed from a policy point of view. So what happens is that when you migrate from analog to digital, you migrate from this VHF space in which you are broadcasting the frequency, in which we have to move to a higher frequency, ultra high frequency. Once you migrate from VHF to UHF, you basically create what is called digital dividend. Now the dividend is what comes up where, uh, you know, telcos, the telecom operators, mobile phone operators, they are all literally waiting for this migration to take effect so that they are in turn, they will be able to use the same frequency in VHF to launch LTE, the technologies for mobile phones that will allow you to do much more faster downloads and speeds as well as uh, 3G and you know all the huge benefits that come with uh, the telcos in that space. They will definitely are waiting for this migration more than anyone else. Now finally, you've been involved in digital migration for South Africa. Now what lessons can Zimbabwe take from this? Zimbabwe can be, you know, can, can the, the fact that it's now launching a little, uh, later than a lot of people have tried to launch uh, is, is, a, is good in that, you, you know, we have learned now, we know where the mistakes are likely to be made and we try to rectify those before they happen. For instance, uh, South Africa, you know, has had a aborted takeoff. They tried more than five, six times to launch DTT and up to today, they have not made it on air because of the challenges that are associated with, uh, you know, a lack of an all-inclusive legislation, policy, and all of that, you know. And uh, we think that those are lessons. Malawi tried to turn on digital in January this year at the beginning of it. And, and it was a record switch off. They turned on for a week and it was switched off. And the, the reasons were lack of stakeholder consultation across the whole country. So we are urging every Zimbabwean to take, you know, the challenge of debating this issue. It's a national issue, it's a national, of a national importance, and everyone should, you know, welcome the, de the development of uh, migration from analog to digital and taking these lessons learned from across the world. We should be proud that we are not going to, you know, fall in the same sort of uh, uh, problems that these, uh, these uh, countries have, have. And before I let you go, do you think we will meet this deadline? Well, yes, and you know, to some extent you'd like to say the migration is not an instant thing, it doesn't happen overnight. There is a start date. The start date is June 2015. Mm -hmm. So the question is, are you able to meet that deadline? From a launch perspective, yes. But then there's a consumer awareness campaign. People have to go and buy set-top set -top boxes, which are decoders to decode this signal. Then it's a consumer. This will be an expense on the consumer. Oh, yeah, it will definitely be an expense on the consumer, but not so much of an expense because the technology is such that these boxes now have reduced in price from about $60 to $80. You know, you get a DTT decoder, which will give you more than six, seven, eight. 10, 12 channels of the ZBC, giving you a variety of programs and uh, endless good quality, multitude of benefits. So I think for a $60, $80 mark, one would like to take that as a sure benefit and we are looking forward to that. Uh, the consumers in, in Zimbabwe will be the biggest beneficiaries, I can tell you for sure. We thank you for coming to News Hour. Thank you.
Mr. Gelfand Kausio, the chairman of the ZBC Board Committee on Digitization and Technology Development, talking to us about digitization and whether we will meet at least the launch by June 2015.